presented about the say, and this is about the, the costing aspects of, of um, developing your national plan. Um, so I'm presenting this tool on behalf of Dr. Emily Paracci, who unfortunately couldn't make it today. This tool was primarily developed by the United States Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. And um, we have been working uh, in collaboration with them to develop this as an online tool also. So just to give a, a, a brief overview of, of what the tool is looking at, and Andre mentioned this in his presentation about how vaccinating animals isn't that simple. It's not just about putting the vaccine into animal. There are lots of different components that need to be considered. And you need to understand various different factors to, to um, implement these prevention and control campaigns. And that includes things like, how many dogs do we have? You don't know if you can reach 70% coverage if you don't know how many dogs you need to vaccinate. How much vaccine will we need? Essentially, we've, we've heard it time and again from different countries that they, they purchase 100,000 doses of vaccine. Why? Well, that's because that's how much they, they buy every year. That's not based on, on any facts or any figures about their dog population, about reaching that 70% coverage. How many vaccinators do we need? So this is then the human resource component also. You, you tend to forget that, yes, we need to buy the vaccine, but how is that vaccine going to get into the animals? Well, we need vaccinators on the ground who can then do this. Do we have enough vaccinators to do this? So we know we need to vaccinate, say, 500,000 dogs. Who's going to do that? That can't be the job of two or three people. So you need to have the human resources as well. What infrastructure do we need? So this is vehicles. This is means to, to get those vaccinators to those animals so that they can deliver the vaccine. This includes syringes, vehicles to get there, petrol or fuel. Um, all that information that all ties in with these vaccination campaigns that often are forgotten or, or left to the, uh, to the side and then pose a problem when you actually want to begin implementing these vaccination campaigns. So what advances or technology or uh, support do we then need to do this? So this is where the GDREP tool comes in. And it's broken down into three different phases. So the first phase is a pre preparation phase. And this is um, when your current vaccination status in the country is um, about 18% or lower. So this is really the introductory phase when you're beginning to implement mass dog vaccination in your country. And you're looking at training your workforce, undertaking some field studies to understand your dog population, um, and then strengthening your laboratory capacity. We've heard a lot from various speakers throughout the conference about the importance of lab capacity to be able to diagnose um, samples and to be able to then strategically vaccinate in those areas. You then That's a three-year phase. You then move up into the second three-year phase, which is this, um, the scale-up phase. And this is scaling up your vaccination from 18% to about 70%. So this is the, the, really the implementation phase, um, vaccinating those animals and beginning that, scaling it up to the national level, um, and looking at improving your logistics and then improving your vaccination coverage. And then lastly, not leastly, is then the, the sustained vaccination of your dog population for that maintenance, sorry, for that maintenance period um, to maintain that 70% coverage to, to ensure that you can then control and eliminate the disease in your dog population. So the GDREP tool is based on uh, various different data sources. So it's from country population data, from human development index data, from um, burden estimates, various different publications, and a whole host of um, public knowledge and knowledge from the various international organizations, including, for, any, for example, the IE veterinary capacity. So this is how many veterinarians and um, vaccinators there are or may be available in the different countries. So the tools gathered all this dif inf different information and has um, brought it together in, in quite a comprehensive and detailed database. This is just to show you an example of how detailed this really is and how much information has gone into developing this tool. So 
the GD Rep tool, um, like all of the other tools that have been developed, is completely customizable. So what you do is at the top here, and um, we'll go through it briefly um, in the workshop session also, is you then enter your country name there, and it then um, allocates default values for all the different aspects. So that includes your human population, your dog estimated dog population, your human to dog ratio, um, estimated dog uh, vaccination coverage. And what can then be done is that all those figures can then be changed by you. So if you have updated information, <laughs> you know that in your country, the estimates say that there's only a 10% vaccination coverage, but you know from your data from the current year that that is actually 20% you can then change that to 20%. And it will then adjust all the different figures and calculate um, new information based on that information. And again, looking at some of the logistical aspects, so the human resources, the number of vaccinators available. Again, this is data drawn from the IE um, database. But if you've um, trained some more vaccinators or if you have the opportunity to bring more vaccinators in, you can then change that figure and that then adjusts all the, all the figures. And it's not only about how many vaccinators you have, but also about how many animals they can vaccinate in a day. So their capacity as a human resource. So you got to remember that working in extremely difficult environments, it may not be feasible to vaccinate 150 dogs a day per person. You may only be able to vaccinate 50 or 100. And that then alters um, the time needed to, to run this vaccination campaign, the costs associated with that because it is a longer campaign, maybe extra fuel is then required. And all that, all that money and all that information is then um, brought together and aggregated into these various figures. So it breaks down the total costs to run this prevention and control campaign for the um, vaccination of dogs in your country into the three different phases that I discussed. And what I didn't mention is that a country can enter at any of these phases. So if your country is fairly far advanced and they're already implementing mass dog vaccination campaigns, they would then enter at stage two. And so then the number of years towards reaching elimination and the budget, budgetary confinements related to that would then be adjusted. So you can see that it's broken down as an example here into the three different phases, and then it gives you a total cost. So as I mentioned, um, we'll go through this tool and we can then um, do it an example, adjust some of the figures, and you can then see how that works. It is completely customizable with any information that you may have to then update the, to update the values. So. The important thing about this tool is who is the intended audience? We've had many discussions, even at this meeting, I, I remember on Sunday, we were uh, sitting at lunchtime, and we were saying, how do you get policymakers interested? How can you get them to invest in your control programs? And something that was said is that money is important. Policymakers, um, permanent secretaries, they often, or in our experience, aren't interested in hearing about, oh, you know, animals are dying or humans, there, there are some humans dying. When they hear money, then their ears prick up. And this is an important tool because then you can show them that this is how much it will cost. This is how much it can save you. You're currently spending this amount of money on uh, rabies intervention or on other factors, but if you spend this amount of money that's developed from this tool, we can then control the disease through the mass, uh, mass vaccination of animals. And that can then save you money. And then people start listening. When they hear they can save money, then I'm interested, <coughs> everyone's interested. Even better, a dog must beat them and they have to come to you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so what are the goals of this tool? So as I mentioned, it's to highlight the monetary and fiscal commitments that are required for rabies elimination. So again, it's an overview of the entire monetary amount that is required to vaccinate those animals. And it's also broken down per phase and by year so that you can see each year we need to invest 
<coughs> excuse me, uh, a certain amount of money. And without investing this amount of money, we will not be able to uh, uh, vaccinate sufficient numbers of animals. So that can really then make the case for the investment of a larger sum of money in a limited amount of time as opposed to um, a, a smaller sum of money forever. Because if you only invest a certain amount and you don't reach that 70% target to control the disease, then they'll be spending that money forever. It'll never, ever stop. So you need to then rather say, invest a bit more now so that we can control the disease now and then you can then have the savings in the future. So how can this tool be used? As I mentioned, um, it is part of a tool that ties in with the, the stepwise approach, as Andre mentioned. It's allocating a budgetary amount to some of the aspects of the SARE tool and those required for rabies control and elimination. The CDC does run specific workshops, um, in-country workshops, and you are, um, they are available. You can contact them and um, they can then assist you and discuss with you how they can run this uh, workshop um, in your country. Um, it's also as part of an online tool on the K9 Rabies Blueprint um, that uh, GARC has developed in, in conjunction with them to have this as an online tool freely available. And then just some acknowledgements um, from the CDC partners um, of the various different partners that, that have contributed to this tool. Um, yeah, so I'd just like to thank you for, for your attention. And then we're going to briefly go through the tool just as an example.